Broken social scene. That's the fabulous Justin Peroff on drums. Andrew Whiteman on guitar, Sam Goldberg, Charles Spearin, Lisa Lobsinger, David French, and of course, Kevin Drew and Brandon Canning, who join me here at the table. Hello, lads. Hello. Hello, so Gio. The song, by the way, Texaco Bitches. You know, with the kind of success and the obligations that come with success that you've had, it's interesting that one of the beautiful things about Broken Social Scene from the beginning was this idea of this creative spontaneity, the guys getting together, uh, men and women getting together and, and, and jamming and, and friends forming this unit that are going to uh, go in whatever creative direction they want to go. Uh, tell me about the challenges of doing that while when you become a, a, uh, a business, uh, a band that uh, people uh, um, recognize, that's a touring band, uh, the, and the expectations that come with that. As far as expectations, I guess, you know, some nights you have to deal with, hey, where's Feist? Uh, or, hey, where's Emily? And then you just have to say, well, you know, you've got a computer. You can go online and see where they might be because all this information is accessible. So, uh, you we know. Get that, we used to get that a lot yeah. when we play live. Guys just like, where are the ladies? Yeah, but I think, I think we can is do Is that really your answer? Will you, do you have a computer? Go to <laughs> Canning usually gets very uh, curt yeah, with them. Yeah. It's just something you don't feel like hearing when it's like, we're, we traveled here to come play a show for you, and we yeah. hope you enjoy it. <laughs> As the group that we are, Kevin had a good bit. I don't know what country. The following people will not be playing. <laughs> I think that was, in, that was in Singapore. That was in Singapore, and there was a, uh, a manhunt going on for... Oh, right, for one of the names. That, uh, uh, yeah, one, of the, one of the people. Oh, yeah, and you said you mentioned... I name. mentioned everybody, and in the end, I mentioned the terrorists that they were after in Singapore. Yeah. I don't know. I just said he won't be here either because they can't find him. <laughs> but it, but the list was pretty huge. We had a great story where we, when we first started, this is a good one. Where on our first show we went to Burlington, Vermont, and it was when you forgot it and people came out, and uh, we were doing sound check, and this kid came up to me and we had this band together and this is 2003, and it was our first sort of American show, sort of starting a tour, and he said, hey, uh, which which one plays in the stars? I said, oh, uh, they're, they're not with us right now. They're, they're, they're doing our interior. He's like, oh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, who's in metric? I was <laughs> like, oh, uh, they're not here either. They're just like, uh, they're like, oh. I said, okay, which one is, uh, who's Feist? And we're like, oh, uh, she's not here either. She's, uh, he's like, oh, okay, cool. He's still okay. He's like, who's the guy from Do Make Say Think? And Charlie was not with us at the time. I was like, oh, he's not here either. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> And then he said, who's the guy that plays in Godspeed, you black emperor? And I just looked at him, I was like, that's Gus. He's in the bathroom right now, but I'll make sure that you, <laughs> we introduce you to him when he comes out. Because that was a joke that Dumex had, because Dumex used to get that all the time. And that's what happens when you have a band with all these people. There's, you're always getting asked who's in it and who's doing what and where are they coming in. And but maybe I didn't articulate my question well enough, because you've not answered it. <laughs> uh, what, the business. I'm we dodging rambled? it. We're dodging it. <laughs> Well, my question is, when you become Have you heard a Cindy Lauper's Money Changes <laughs> Everything? Well, that's my question. There I, you go. How, when, when you become a business, especially for you guys, right? Well, especially, I mean, you're the uh, nth degree example of friends get together and, and let's go, let's have a creative, fun exercise. So, so how do you, how have you, I mean, you've clearly walked it successfully enough to stay together, right? Yeah. Despite the jokes that Charles was making about, think, or you've all made about whether you can handle staying together. So what's been the secret or how have you walked that line? We've been fair. We've been we've been constantly trying to to be fair with everyone that we work with. I mean, we, we haven't been completely amazing at it at times, but we've done. I, I can guarantee you say we've done way better than most. And uh, well, you you know you've toured in a band. I mean, you know how funny bands can be. I yep. mean, bands are bands are just funny entities, no matter what the composition of its members or who's coming in and out, or whether it's three people or five people, or whether it's the sprawling collective known as Broken Social Scene. So I think, you know, bands have problems, and we have, you know, computers. Yeah. Where are you? <laughs> Where are you? You know, or we have, tell you know, calling James Shaw at uh, 6.30 in the morning from you know, from Glasgow saying, uh, you need to be on a plane tomorrow and you're going to Birmingham. Because our guitar player, Bill Priddle, broke his collarbone, so he showed up. Also, my pops is here tonight. He helps run uh, the social scene business with us. And he even said tonight before we were going and talking about the tour, he's like, I don't know how I can split up 
this any more than how we're doing. So <laughs> I feel like, you know, I have this one, two fishes to feed 70 people here. So, but we seem to get by. We seem to do all right by it. From the beginning, there's been this mythic quality to Broken Social Scene. There was even a book last year about your evolution. And, and some people do see you as this mythic force. Others, you know, might see a lot of the myth building as hype or overdone, you know? D does, what are your feelings about the elevation of the story of Broken Social Scene? God, you got, we, got the, <laughs> we got the top ones. I, uh, I have no problem with it because yeah. being in a band is all about leaving behind your myth or your legacy, whether it's, whether it's Fugazi, Led Zeppelin, Alicia Keys, Erica Badu, I don't know, Kiss. <laughs> whoever you know whoever everyone has like this mythology about like who did what to who Fleetwood Mac you know there's a good example how we would sort of get tagged into that sometimes Wu-Tang uh, Clan Wu-Tang Clan yeah a lot of people compare us to the Wu-Tang Clan we get a lot of comparisons to that. Yeah. <laughs> right but we're not answering I think your you're, question you're, again you're where Wu-Tang meets Fleetwood Mac yeah, yeah there you go there you yeah. go well it's, put well put yeah. spice it up Jim. guys I, I mean I asked you it wasn't even fair I asked you that question without I've got about a minute and a half left it's a uh, uh, it's a pleasure to see you, Thanks, as ever. Man. I thank you very much for making the time to make this your, the show you did before the album came out. Uh, it's, it's meant a lot to all of us, and uh, it's such a pleasure to, to listen to your record because it's really a really great one. Thank and you. Uh, good luck with this and the, the touring coming up and the, the craziness. You're gonna, you've got another couple of years ahead of you with all this right. one. <laughs> Broken social scene, folks. Forgiveness rock record. Thank you. Kevin and Brandon, Q at cbc.ca, Twitter's Yangameshi, to be continued.